Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Today I learned that 69 is the only natural number whose square, 4,761, and cube, 328,509, uses every decimal digit from 0 to 9 exactly once. To visualize this in another way, the cube has six digits and the square has four digits. So together, there are 10 digits between the square and the cube. And there are exactly 10 digits which correspond to the digits going from 0 to 9 used exactly once. This is a very nice mathematical property of 69, but it's an interesting fact that it's the only number with this property. So how can we prove that this is true? To get started, let's compute 2 squared, which is 4, and 2 cubed, which is 8. We can see the square has one digit, the cube has one digit. Now, in order to get all of the digits from 0 to 9 between the square and the cube, we're going to need a total of 10 digits. So here we have only two digits between the square and the cube, and we need 10 digits. So 2 is too small of a number. So we'll try a larger number. What if we try 11 squared and 11 cubed? Now the square has three digits and the cube has four digits. So this is a total of seven digits. And once again, this is too small. We need 10 digits. So what if we compute 45 squared and 45 cubed? The square has four digits and the cube has five digits. So we have nine digits here, but we need 10 digits. So we need to be slightly larger. So we keep computing, 46 will also be slightly too small. But once we get to 47, we have just the right number of digits. There are four digits in the square and there are six digits in the cube. But this is not a solution because some of the digits are repeated. So we can start testing from 48 squared and 48 cubed. So that's a lower bound. Now by the same token, there are going to be numbers whose square and cubes have too many digits. So what numbers will that be? Well, let's say we take 100 squared and 100 cubed. We're going to count that this is a total of 12 digits. So if we have 12 digits between the square and the cube, even if we get all of the digits from 0 to 9, we will get some repeated digits. So we have too many digits here. So we will check 99 squared and 99 cubed. And voila, this is exactly 10 digits. Now 99 is not an answer because the digit nine is repeated in the cube, but we know that every number larger than this will not work. So we can stop testing at 98. So we really need to do the following. For a number between 48 and 98 inclusive, let's say the number is n, we compute n squared and n cubed, and we test if the digits in n squared plus the digits in n cubed are exactly the set of digits from zero to nine. So that's not too hard to do computationally. You could even do it by calculator or by pencil and paper, but we are in the computer age. And of course, you don't even have to write your own code. So I asked Google Bard this prompt, write a program in Python to find all numbers whose square and cube contains every digit from zero to nine without repetition. So it gave me some code in Python, and it actually said the output will be 69. But you always want to use code with caution. So let's look at this code in a little bit more detail because it's not doing exactly what we want it to do, even though it got us the right answer. So here's the output from Google Bard. And I'll mention I use Google Bard because ChatGPT didn't give me code that actually worked and gave the correct answer. So this is a case where actually Google Bard was something I really appreciated. So it wasn't perfect, but it was in the right direction. So let's analyze this code. So the first thing it's doing, I set to test for all numbers. So it decided to test for a very large range of numbers. So we don't need to go ahead and do that. We can actually just limit our range because there's no point in testing numbers that are outside of the ranges that we already defined. So we only want to test from 48 to 98. So let X be the range 48, 99, 1, and we want N in X. So we'll replace this code. Now we've replaced number with n. So wherever we have number, we want to change that to be n. 
So we'll go ahead and change the code. Now, what do we need to notice? Look at this line of code. Digits is equal to the set of the string n plus the string square plus the string cube. Well, this is a little bit of a problem. We only want the digits in the square and the cube. We don't want the digits in the number n itself. So let's remove that from the code. So we get rid of that. And now we have code that we can actually test out and see how it works. So now an amazing thing we can do is we can check our code and visualize it in Python Tutor. So we first defined find numbers, and now the first number we're going to check is going to be the number 48. So we're going to compute its square, we're gonna compute its cube, then we're going to get the set of digits from the square and cube and see if that set of digits has exactly the 10 digits from zero to nine. This does not. So now we're going to increment to 49. We do the same thing. We check the square, we check the cube, we check the set of digits from the square and the cube. We see if that is exactly 10 digits. It's not. So then we increment. And we're gonna keep doing this and now the computer program, this is the beauty. It just checks everything for us. It goes through this process. And eventually we're going to get to the number 69, which is going to be the only solution. And from there, we're gonna check all the other possible values. And we're gonna see that none of the other values will be a solution. So we let the program run. It checks all the relevant values and we get that 69 is the only solution. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.